uh, people generally like to say that the vex that the uh, mitzora is a, a spiritual illness, which it may be, but but you can actually get it from somebody else, even presumably if you didn't do it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you have to also do something wrong, but you can. It is contagious, according to certain midrashim, and therefore perhaps the reason that the that the mitzora has to be kept out of the town is not just so that he um, not as a, the punishment for his non-social behavior, but to protect the people in the town. And then we have a source for bidud, for isolation. Torah source. Because I had to ask him, yeah, anyway. Um, that, but, actually, that actually makes a lot of sense because the whole spiritual aspect of it is 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 only from the from the Midrashim. But the the disease obviously existed in the, in the times of Torah. Right. But Yishim Kesher to Nafshi. It's not a proof. What I have is not a proof because that is not spiritual because it could be that you'll only it's contagious if you've also spoken Lashon Hara. And since everybody speaks Lashon Hara, so it'll be contagious. <laughs> In other words, it has a spiritual aspect. Anyway, we left off actually at the end of Pei Zion. And I think we're still with Lexi. I don't, uh, Lexi, which, which exact Seif we, are we in? We finished Tet and then we're on Yud. Okay, so Lexi, why don't you pick it up from there? Okay. So this hopefully should not take too long and it builds very directly off of the last safe. So uh, when we last left our heroes, we were in Simon Sewer at Saif Tet. We were talking about the like Kava and the like Shito when it comes to um, this sour milk that we use to create um, other cheeses um, and what its status is like vis-a-vis -vis food. Um, so like the Rif and then the Rambam and ultimately here in the Shulchan Arach hold that all of that contents of the keva is Pirsha Ba'alna, that it just does not have the status of food. Ergo, like you don't, like you can cook that with Basar de Chachila. You know, it's, it's just mamash not Chalav. Um, and the Rashi Pirush is the exact opposite, which is that it's Chalav Gamor. Um, even the karush, everything in there. So all of the laws that would apply to halav apply to this. Um, so that's what we just read. And so now in the Seif Tet, also I'm going to share my screen. One second. Um, so in Seif Tet, we get the Rebbeinu Tam Perush, which we already mentioned last time, um, which is that the Rebbeinu Tam makes a distinction between, and I'll zoom in, this i'll zoom in more um hopefully it's a little better um yeah so we mentioned this last time our baby tom's parish which we get here um is that uh so the first part is just kind of, if anything, it feels almost like this should be like included in the last Sa'if because we kind of switch almost a little between these two parts of it. The first part is continuing like, what's the status of the keva? And so Rebina Tam thinks Karush, Pirsha doesn't have the status of food. So Lul, the clearer milk, has the status of food. And so you have to worry about it as Kalav. Um, and now like relatedly, this last bit, it's not clear and this is where we'll get some of like the Beit Yosef, Da 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 da. According to like, some people say this is according to Rebbeinu Tam because that's how like um, maybe the Torah holds, which is not what a lot of people think. Some say it's because according to the Rif and the Rambam Perush, like this is irrelevant. Um, but that's a dispute, right? So this part here, if I salted the keva while it has the chlap in it. Um, like the chalav is aser, but we end up getting in, in the Shulchan Aruch, there's kind of a distinction, right? We'll get there, but the Shulchan Aruch treats more like, what do we do with the keva when using it in other chalav? Not so much about like, oh, I'm, I'm like making my gvina in here, but if I like salted it in, in the, in the keva itself, like, what do I do vis-a-vis -vis other stuff? So I want to read, here's this so we already read the toast vote that's just the one where Urbanu Tom makes his like distinction um does somebody want to read actually sorry this is a little over I think starting with the mashma and I put it here um 
Noam, do you want to read here? Sure. Um, this is in the Bay Yosef? Yes. All right. The Mordechai, the Tom Hayotse Min Habasar, Nase Piresh, Perish and Nivla Bekeva, Tom, She Mishum, the Enkoch, the Tom, Shekivel, Perish, Zemina Or. Sorry, can you just move the leg? Kish, you need to have a harkach, in Chalab Gamor, Shemenu, Nasagina, Shilich Imo, Tom Basar, Yasa Harkach, Basar Bechalab. Share Dagim Shekiblu Tambasar Mutar Lechavram Acharkach Im Chalav Kol Sheken Zeshu Peresh B'Dvar Batel Shein Bokach Lechavel Tam Basar. It's a long sentence. Holich Zeh Tam Imo Lechaber Oto Im Chalav Hagina Hanaf Gabo Lasso Az Basar Bechalav Dhabe Garua Miton Tam Barnot and Tam Mitzad Shu Parish Gamor. That seems like the first logical stop. Um, <laughs> Do you want me to translate? How do you want me to? Yeah, just explain it. You don't need to translate word for word. Right. So I probably have to do that in order to get it all. <laughs> uh, that when it, when my understanding is that when it becomes like the, whatever the, however you want to call it, excrement, whatever, uh, it no longer has the power to convey the time of milk. Um, so therefore it's not an issue. Right. So there is, is this opinion like we have kind of um, different ideas around like obviously this is relevant to us to the Beit Yosef to to like the Shulchan Aruch here. What do I think about the Basar Bechalav issue of using this keva um, if I think it's Pirsha, right? And so like this this like shita that the Rashba suggests, uh, or I guess like that yeah that the Mordechai brought of the Rashba would suggest that like if I think it's Pirsha. Like this is even more makeal than not bar not, right? Like, you know, this is as opposed to, which is the opposite of what like Rashi used to argue, like Rashi was arguing, this is like way more machmir than not bar not. How could you use that as like a paradigm? And he's saying like, it's Pirsha Ba'alma. Like if we think that the fish aren't a good enough conduit for the meatiness, um, then like the Pirsha shouldn't be either. Although as many other people note, there's also one less step of separation in the case of the pure shed and there is with the dagim, which is one of various reasons think, some people say but, uh, that like it isn't not bar not. Lexi, do you, I mean, is it is it only a question of not bar not, or is it also relevant to the fact that the pirsha is like uh, is pagum is is inedible? I don't, the fish they don't are edible. use the language of pagum anywhere, so I don't know. Well, the no, but this is what he said. But the first line that he says is, yeah, he says, I mean, we talk about it as. I no, but he says, he says, he says, Nase perish. He says, wait just a second. He says, the Tam Hayotse Minha Basar, which is good, Tom, but it's Nase perish. It becomes perish, it becomes putrid, becomes putrid, Kushin Ivlava when it gets absorbed in the sour milk. So yeah, I mean, say, I just... it, start, it starts off being good, but it becomes bad because of what it mixed with, which is different from the fish. I... I'm just hesitant to use. I agree that that's a difference. I'm I didn't use that. You, use I don't have, no, don't use the word pagum. Use the word perish. Of family gum. But yes, as in like the, the argument for those who believe that that like the Pirsha makes a difference here and that you shouldn't have to worry about Basar Bechalaf here at all is that like Pirsha doesn't have the status of food. Ergo, when like the meat is absorbed in it, the meaty flavor just becomes also like Pirsha, which also doesn't have the status of food. And mm -hmm. this argument would presumably kind of indicate like potentially this idea of like once like pakashem isor, I mean, it's not even a shem isor at that point. It's just like, wasn't an isor, it was just basar. But that kind of like once like pakashem basar, it can't like become basar again when it leaves and goes from the keva to the milk that's being turned into cheese. I think that's kind of the essence of the argument for those who think that if this is pirsha, this is totally fine. You don't have to worry at all. They're like the basar becomes not food when it comes into contact with the keva and so it doesn't become food again if it would go from the keva to the chalab exactly exactly um so that's one argument that if i believe this is pirsha ba'alma i don't have to worry about the basar b'chalab issues here really at all even when it's then connected to chalab which is in fact chalab gamor okay noam do you want to finish this up 
her thing. Aval Rabbeinu Yerucham Katav Sheyesh Misha Katav Dafila Fish Shitat Hagaonim Ibn Lacha Keva Betraor Shasur La Amir Bagvina Shafa Fish Eperesh Balma Mikomakom Kvarla Katam Basar Shemamir Ba Havale Basar Bechalav Vechen Ami Ikar. So then he gives Rabbeinu Yerucham, which has the very stringent opinion that, like, really, no matter the status of the Keva, it has become meaty. Um, therefore, if it were to interact with milk, um, you'd have a basar b'chalav. And then he says, that's the ikar. Or at least that's what the Rashba yeah. says. Yeah. And I think, like, I personally, like, I, I can understand both sides of the parish, right? Like, I can see this idea of, like, if I really believe this is, like, pure Shabbat Alma, it's basically not food. It's, like, waste. The idea of, like, some flavor could go to that and then be transferred to something else and, like, be meaningfully foody feels like a little dissonant. And on the other hand, like you could say, depending on how, like if we think this was salted in the cava, like probably there is a decent amount of meat flavor there. And to say that like, I really don't know enough about how these flavors interact to really be able to state this confidently, but like it doesn't feel impossible that you could have something that still tastes mamash like meat uh, coming from that cava and being imparted to the milk, right? So that's the Rabbeinu Yerucham thing is of like, look, even if we say status-wise the keva itself is pirsha, in reality, there's still meat flavor here. And that's still going to be imparted to the chalav. And so even if you think it's pirsha, we care about that. Um, and so that's actually how the chachila, the Beit Yosef, and as we'll see in the Shulchan Aruch, end up holding, right? So here, this is from a, just a couple lines later. So he kind of like takes an intermediate position of these things being like, yes, we hold it's pure Shabbat Alma. Um, however, we think there is enough substance to the argument that like there is sort of a meaty flavor transfer here that like it's not best if you have this keva that was like salted in the keva itself or whatever, stay there for a really long time. You probably shouldn't be using that to like create your cheese. But like, if you did, we think there's enough substance to the like Rashba argument that like it became Pirsha. It's not really meat. That like, fine, you didn't oser all of your cheese. Um, like, and like, <laughs> shoot. Yes, I just want to, I'm trying to remember the, the Rashi. Is this essentially breaking on the lines about whether or not the Ora Keva itself is a Kli or is actually the animal, right? Is, is that really what's going on here, discussion-wise? Can you expand on that? Because I, yeah, other words, like, and I remember, I, I seem to recall this from the Rashi, right? Like, is the stomach of the animal, right? Is it just a Kli or is it actually part of like the, the you know, the Basar contents of the animal at the end of the day, right? Do it's we, Basar. Right? Yeah, what? It's Basar. Well, I, it doesn't seem to necessarily be from from the the reef rambam school right well no but that's the or right the reef rambam yeah, yeah, school yeah, yeah, yeah. is just talking about what's in it yeah, yeah. right uh, well so that's my question actually i'm not so sure every time that they say keva they just mean the context i think sometimes keva means or keva and sometimes it means keva i don't think so just because they make they make the distinction and again this comes from like we're only seeing a section of this but mm -hmm. like when it comes to all the really in-depth cheese making stuff there, and the Gemara itself is very intentional about making the distinction between keva and ora keva. So I do actually feel reasonably confident, and especially because when they use pirsha, it's about contents, right? Pirsha is like waste. And like mm -hmm. the, the keva, the organ itself is not waste. That's an animal organ, right? And so I feel pretty confident that when they're like talking about the keva and saying it's pirsha ba'alma, I do think they're in fact talking about like the like soured milk that's inside of the keva, whereas mm -hmm. I think everyone agrees that like, unless you have salted and dried out the skin of the keva, it has the status of meat. We see mentioned in, in the Ramah that we're about to read um, that like some people do basically turn it into a kli, right? They like dry out the mm -hmm. keva. Um, and at that point it becomes so non-meaty that we actually don't, we think it's like wood, right? But like absent that process, I think everyone believes this to be basar. Yeah, except the not bar not argument that gets made right by the Rashba, right, assumes that there's a kli somewhere in there, right? That's I mean, <laughs> yes and no, right? Like that he doesn't actually he doesn't actually make that explicit. I, I think that like and I think it's honestly why a lot of people think that it's just a misuse of the term not bar not, 
right? Like to me, if you actually look at the Rashford's argument, it seems to mostly hinge on the fact of the Teva being Pirsha, not so much about how many taste transfers there are, so much as like the Basar becomes Pirsha when it comes into contact with the Pirsha. Just, just, so just to support what you're saying, not by not includes food, certainly includes food. That's what we said. That was his point. That's his point about the fish. That it is also not far not like the fish, which absorbed flavor and then exuded the flavor, and that but counted it, as it one more not. But it absorbs flavor from a clea. It doesn't absorb flavor from the thing itself. In the, that, like, that's in the, it. that doesn't that doesn't cause. That's not the reason why it's called a one more level in in noten tam by noten tam. Well, I, I mean, as I in mean, as in like what you're saying, right? Is that like it, some people say it's not far not because the clea is part of having enough. Per- processes of Nadina Tam to make this like okay and I get what you're arguing I just I honestly don't really think I don't think that's how the Rashba is using it I think he honestly is using the language of not bar not to indicate these multiple this like distance of taste transfer but is not actually applying it in a particularly medactic way and I think that's where we almost get like the oh it's like actually like Garua I'm not bar not I'm gonna like compare it to that where that's a case where we say that something coming from me ends up being permitted to be eaten with like dairy, but actually this isn't even really not bar not. It's just an even more make your case because the basar just becomes like not food when it's in contact with the pure show. Yeah, except doesn't Rashi essentially say it's not not bar not because you can't treat the, the uh, yes. I can remember he says kevar or yes, I can't there's again, is. many, many people feel very strongly that you cannot use not bar not uh, arguments here. And Rashi, as I, as I mentioned, Rashi thinks yeah. that Dafka, this is like He's like, he gave a whole sassy comment about how absurd it is to compare this to not bar not. And this is clearly way more machmir than that. Um, but the Rashba obviously does not have the same opinion. And this is also related to the fact, like, obviously the Rashba's argument wouldn't work with Rashi because Rashi thinks that it's Chal of Gamor, you know? Um, yeah. All right, we better go all on. Right, all right. Thank you for entertaining that. And I, I, I'll, I'll look back at the Rashi, but. I'm... No worries. Okay. So like, the other big question, or like, I want to leave plenty of time for our last safe in the next few months, but the other big question is basically this idea of Dvar Hama Amid, um, which again is the, the idea of, like we have obviously all our various categories of things that are never Badel, right? Um, and so one of these, like a Dvar Hama Amid is often compared to like things like Tavlimim or something that's like a Dvar Mahmitz that like it performs such a significant function that like if the Dvar Hama'amid itself is usher, then all the things it's, that have been made with it are usher. Um, So we talk in, we're gonna talk about the idea of things being batel. And then like some of uh, people are like, how, how could this keva? And sorry, this, I'm trying to include, there's multiple shito here that we have to keep in mind, right? If I think of the, I have to keep in mind whether I think the keva is an isser in and of itself, right? Do I think that there's something like forbidden if this is keva of a novella, for example, there's that. Um, and so if I'm the Riff in the Rambam, I say no. I say that it's Pirsha and it's fine. If I'm the Rabbeinu Tam, I say if you're using Tzalul, then that is like novella keva. Um, if I'm using Karush, then no. Um, and if I'm Rashi, then it all is. And then in this like seif in particular, we also have to worry about what's the deal with this keva now becoming meaty flavory. Has this become basar v'chalav? Um, and if this has become basar v'chalav, then what does that mean for it being a devar hama Um, so does somebody, Yavni, can you read this bit? Sorry, I realize it's a semi-long chunk, but. Sure. Mostly. What is this from? This is from the. This is also from the Beit Yosef. Okay. Ahad Amar Shmuel, Mipnei Ma Asru Gvinot Hanochrim, Mipnei Shem Amidim Otam Beor Kevat Nevela, Dahainu Tama Denaket Or Kevat Nevela, Mishum Demachar Shehu Batsmo Asu Kevand Ukumi Ukim Lo Batil. אבל אור כיבת כשרה, מאחר שהוא בפני עצמו, וליט באיסורה, אלא משום חיבורו עם החלב, ליקה למימר, ליקה למימר האחי, 
דכל אימת דלא יהיב טעמה, לאו בשר בחלב הוא, אלא היי באופיה קאי, והיי באופיה קאי. באפה. באפה, קאי והיי באפה קאי, וכך הם דברי הרמב״ם. דברי הרב אמזל שכתב פרק, פרק ג' מהלכות מאכלות, מאכלות אסורות בימי חכ, חכמי המשנה גזרו על גבינות הנוכרים והסכום מפני שמעמידים אותם באור קיבה של שחיטתן שהיא נבלת, נבלה ואם תאמר והלא אור הקיבה דבר קטן הוא עד מאוד בחלב ש- 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 שעמד בו ולמה לא יבטל במיועתו מפני שהוא המעמיד אה, הגבינה אה, מפני שהוא המעמיד הגבינה והואיל ודבר האסור הוא שהעמיד הרי הכל אסור ובפרק ט' כתב אה, אסור להעמיד הגבינה באור הקיבה של שחוטה ואם העמיד תואם את הגבינה, אם, אם יש בה טעם בשר, אסורה ואם לאו, מותרת, מפני שהמעמיד דבר המותר הוא שכיבה השחוטה היא, ואין, ואין כאן אלא איסור בשר בחלב, ששיעורו בנותן טעם. אבל המעמיד באור כיבת נבלה וטריפה ובהמה, Uh, ובהמה טמאה, הואיל והמעמיד דבר אסור uh, בפני עצמה, נאסרה הגבינה משום נבלה, לא משום בשר בחלב, ומפני חשש זה אסרו גבינות הנוכרים, כמו שביארנו עד כאן לשונו. Uh, so, uh, the, the bottom line I got of that is that the Rambam holds that the um, that if you, uh, that uh, something that is a soul by itself, if it is ma'amid, then it doesn't matter, then we don't care about not and tam, and it's just a soul, because we've used something that's really a soul to make, to, to, to make the, the cheese. Whereas if it's, whereas you might think that you worry about basar, whereas if it's a question of basar bachalav, meaning the keva itself is, uh, is uh, from a shkuta animal, then it, um, from a kosher animal, then, uh, then, you, then you consider it a, a question of notenta, even if it's ma'amid. Right, so. And this, it's still us like, to do. Yeah, I feel like, no, so I mean, with the, I think they're actually- Even with the shkuta, it's us to do because you can't move out till even a tiny amount. No, um, there actually is a bit where I think the Ramam talks about it um, with the with the Shkuta saying that there are certain areas in which they say that you can because you <laughs> are like, and I forget, and maybe it's just something else. There are cases where they're like, oh, it's not Mavatel Isra the Chatzila because it never became an Isra. Um, yeah, yeah, they, uh, yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a, yeah. there's a, there's a, uh, what is it called? The Chatam Sofer has a chula about that. Right, there's an but idea that like, just maybe now, if I, if I feel I did something where I'm using like this much for shkuta and, you know, that of milk, where like but there's I'm just no saying, chance. But, but the text that we just read now, he clearly says it's forbidden to do it. Yes. Um, so the Rambam does not, at least in this case, there's something else where actually, I, something related to butter where he says it's fine. Whatever, not our topic right now. Um, but basically, yeah, he's like, when, when the Dvar Ramam is itself usur, it's never about tail. When it's basar v'chalav, it's only, like, we only care if it's actually going to give bisari taste to the gvina, because otherwise we just don't have basar v'chalav. And so while that was talking about the ore of the kshera, uh, I think then we then, the Beit Yosef is applying that to our discussion here, when we're talking about the keva, but the keva that was, like, salted in, um, like, the, the sour milk that was salted in the stomach, um, or that was stayed in there for, like, a day. And what's the deal with like the, whether that can be batel, basically, if I use it to make cheese. Um, so one of the arguments, right, is that like, it can be batel because it's really just about whether I give meaty flavor to the halav. And so if there isn't meaty flavor, then like, I think, and I think that's in the case of like, even if I treated mm-hmm. this entire bit of sour milk that I used as if it were entirely busser, um, 
they end up saying like, if there was shishim of that or more in the halav that I'm trying to turn into cheese, it would be fine because I know it wouldn't taste like basar v'chalav. Um, there is another argument that's used that is relevant both to those who don't accept the above argument and to those who are dealing with, for example, Benu Tom's uh, shita about the tzalul and the karush, that this would apply also to using like tzalul karush from a novella. Um, so does somebody want to read, um, Joel, do you want to read this bit from also the bit Yosef? Sure. The ordinary elder asks, "You must get a Mordechai del El B'Shem." Is it Rabbi Baruch? I'm not sure who. I think so. Let here. All right. So another reason. The Chatav Tamid the Mistama Lo Hemira Gvina Mikeva Shekula Asura the Hainu at Salul Ela Gam Mira Karush. Ben Rui Lochi Nu Keva La Mira Chalav Shelo Yeba Mikeva Karush. Right, because it's not just the stuff that at least Rabbi Tam says is Asura. Right, the Salul. But you get both parts of it whenever you're Devar Hamamid. It's going to be a question of two kohot here. The gam pamim ye karush yoter. Sometimes even the, the mutar stuff is even out, outnumbers or outweighs or I can't think of out volumes. There we go. They, uh, yeah, whatever. The havale zeva zevigorem. So then you have a case where two different things are causing it, the hule. And then you'd have uh, a way to be mekel. Denire, derot selamar mi tanze, in lach shivo Devar Hamamid, da zeva zevigorem. Right, because therefore, so the the salul isn't the devar hamamid; it's both the salul and the karush, and therefore, uh, it can actually be batel. Umu shishim sarich neged at salul, but you still, of course, need sixty to one against the salul. Vazem miushav divrei atur dekan dekan pasak the batel b'shishim hanimitam shepiresh rabbeinu baruch kaniskarla kaniskarulel. So, and that's right. so. In other words, we're always; it's never just that you're using the salul; it's always some karush in there. And yeah. So this is like written that when it says like Miushav Divrei Tor, people, some of them like raise this question of like the Torah elsewhere, Paskin, that a Devar Hamamid is never Batel. So then how, how do we seem to then have this idea here that it can be? And it's like, oh, well, it's because this is the case of Zegorn, right? And so I think we've already talked about that here before and we're not going to go deep into it, but right, it's like not exclusively Isser that is causing this process to happen. And so I have the capacity to like Batel the Isser. Okay, I think for time purposes, I'm just going to read the Shulchan Aruch and Ramah. And we've covered most of the issues they're going to address. Um, but if people have questions, we can address them before moving on. So, Okay. Okay, so um, if I find like sour milk in Nikeva um, that had been salted in it um, or that had even just been in it for a full day, I can't then take that sour milk and like put it in other milks to turn it into cheese. Um, and the Rama is like, Lecha I shouldn't even take it while the Chalav is like warm from being like fresher. As in like the Ramah is like, I should like use it basically once it's cooled down, but before it's been there for a day. Um, but that's a thing. Um, but in any case, if I do this, like I, I shouldn't be using this to create cheese because we're worried again about a Basar Vachala issue. So this relates to what Joel just read that like if, um, I use the tzalul, I need shishim to batel it. Vim haya shishim b'chalav, akol mutar. Vim haya keva krusha, ino osar klum. Afilu lo haya shishim b'chalav, neged hakeva. Im haya hakeva tzalul mitchila, benikrash, yesh lo din tzalul. Vyesh mekilin b'ze, ubimkom hesed yesh le akel. Right, so then we have a dispute that I didn't get into, but that he puts simply here, which is that, like, he lechachila holds that is something started out Talul when I took it, basically, when I interacted with it, and then it became more congealed. It has the dean of Talul, of being food. But like some people say it doesn't, some people says once it becomes Karush, it's Pirsha. And he's like, if it's a Makom have said, like you can rely on that, on that Perush. Or Akeva, if a Mim Mochimoto, Miyavshinoto, Benasek, it's Malimoto, Chalav, Mutar. 
Machar Shnitivesh Haveka Itzba Alma, the in Bolachuchit Basar. So this is what I mentioned before. He ends by mentioning that sometimes we do essentially turn the ore of the keva into a kli occasionally and like salt it until it becomes like totally dry. And then we don't treat it as basar because it has no, no moisture. It has, it's not going to have any like flavor transfer, basically. Um, I think that's most of the main stuff. There's some interesting shafts and tazas, but nothing that felt like hugely revelatory or problematic. So if people have any questions, I'm happy to address them. And if not, we can move on to Isaac. Joel? I just, sorry, I, I, I know I'm taking a lot of time, but uh, just when the Ramaz says, right, right, he's, he's passing like the tour there, right, which is is the assumption that he assumes that there is some karush that's going on with the Salul. Yeah, or, so that is yeah. part of what the, I forget if the Taz mentions it, but I'm pretty sure the Shaf mentions it, where they're like, they, and I think, actually, I think I can take a look we, it's not even just an assumption. Sorry, it's not. It's not just an assumption. It, it's it, we get it in the Darchei Moshe. He's just not explicit in the Haggah, but in the Darchei Moshe, he uses the Zevizegorim argument. Thanks. Yeah. Otherwise, it made no sense to me. So. Yeah. But no. If, it, if, which, if he doesn't which, use any of the Perushim we had, then it's like a little puzzling. But in the Darchei Moshe, he seems to use the Zevizegorim. Which section? I'm sorry, Joel. Which, which, in, in, in the Ramah, there he says, right? Ramah says, "Im hamid bo imhu at salul oser kol vinot achi eshishim." Right? Which you think it's Devar Mami. You think that he would think if it's just a salul that it's a sur, um, and in, which is possibly oh, for the tour, but. Uh, no, but yeah. the salul, it, it honestly, I don't understand, wait, isn't it, sim wait, isn't it simply because the salul, even according to Rabbeinu Tom, is like milk, and so you, so you can't use it if, in, you can't use it because milk, you're putting, oh, so it's saying it's like milk, so what's the problem? No, I'm saying the other way, the salul is, is the salul, is milk, sorry, yeah, is milk and meat now, right, it's basar bechalav that you've now, is devar hamamid, so potentially. Right. So as in the... Why is the Salul meat? Well, because the, the Salul either. has been in uh, the cave. It's been salted because it's been in the cave. Because it's been, yes. in, you're talking about the case where it's been in the cave. I wasn't yes. sure where you were yeah. quoting. Yeah. Um, so this whole, this whole thing we're talking about, like then, like we talked about the kind of, because, right, like obviously with the note and stuff, we talk about just what the, like the, you know, cave stuff is itself. But since we're talking about Sarva Chalab right now, we're interested in like, what is that vis-a-vis -vis me using this and then using for other stuff, right? So the stuff in the keva, if it's been salted there or left in there, what's its basar v'chala status and its isr status vis-a-vis -vis using that to then be ma'amid, like- Wait, so, but why did you need, why did you get into the, I mean, is, is, isn't, if it's salul, so it's like, it's good food, it's not pirsha, um, and it's meaty, so you need 60 against it. But you should really need 60 yes. against so in, there's, the meat flavor that's in it. Right. So there's the two different arguments. And I think the assumption also, I don't believe that Archie Moshe brings up the Basar Vachalav one. So I think he prefers the Devazet Gorim argument. But like, as in, it, it's like a little puzzling that the Ramad didn't make any clarifications about it um, in the Haggah itself. But that basically, like, I have to either use the argument that, um, that like Basar Vachalav, the entire entire iser is premised on there being like nitinat tam and so if there's like not going to be in any way any bit of basar flavor in this challah then it's fine or right. i have to use the zagorim that when i say i'm taking imuat salul i never mean mamash just the salul i mean salul and like a little bit of karush yeah I don't, that part i don't understand i thought he's just talking about milk in other words the the, the, the milk is considered meaty now and so you need 60 against it. And as far as Devar Ma'am meat, so we already explained that uh, that's only when it's an Isser. Uh, is this, and this, is this really maybe us? If this, no, because it's not really milk. It's really just meat that uh, it's, it's some kind of, well, that's a good, in other words, what is this Salul? Is it milk? It's food, yeah. but it's not milk. I, I don't no, think it's I think milk because if you shechted the animal and it was in the stomach, it's not milk. It's I think he part of the it being milk. I think that's the whole idea. If it's not pirsha, it is milk. No, I think if it's not pirsha, it's meat. Because it's why would it be milk? It's it's 
because it was uh, the it's like a cle the stomach. You're saying it's the, the stomach acts as a as a vessel. So it's isn't milk it's that milk absorbs. So you're saying like this. And if I'm going to be in a town and I think Salul isn't Pirsha, then I think that it's milk. Like so it's me milk. calling the cover Pirsha is me saying this milk has turned soured and congealed such that it's no longer right. milk. Salul so this is food, and that food that it is is milk, which thus means that I have to be worried about mm -hmm. it's like you know, um, th and this also again like a we have to worry about it if it's from a novella. Right, like because then I have to worry about like, oh, is this no, like it's, a? It's not that milk? case. But B, well, yeah, mo most likely, although this also does these arguments do apply to those scenarios. The the, the Gorim thing certainly does. But B, if it's from Akshira, then I have to worry because I say this is in fact milk, and so I have to worry about how that interacts with the meaty flavor of the keva that it's like been left in or salted in. So the milk essentially became usher because of milk and meat. So now if you're mamid with that, so that's why you're saying you need Zeva Zegora. In other words, because if you're mamid with that, it shouldn't be Batel even in 60, because it's exactly. us. Exactly. So therefore you're saying there's a little if bit I, of- If I see it as like mamish baster v'chalav, mm -hmm. then I shouldn't be able to be Batel at Bashishim. That should be an all, something that's already Iser. Um, and so we should be worried about Dvar Mamid. So, but the Darche Moshe, like here, like brings like the Mordechai, um, the Darche Moshe, and he talks about like, um, sorry, I'm gonna try and find the bit where he brings this up. Like, go around, oh, down here. Um, Zoe Sparat the Torah of Onirad Taritz. So, yeah, it's so, like, I think he, he, like, he says, A, he uses this to like give a Taritz to the Torah, but I think he also believes in this Taritz. Uh, this is what Joel just read, right? Um, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I actually lied before. Sorry. The thing I gave you wasn't even the Beit Yosef. The Beit Yosef does bring the Zephyr Gorim, but the bit that you read, read was literally from the Darfay Moshe. Um, so, like, that seems to be the Ramaz reasoning. I do, I agree that it's weird that he didn't bring it in the Haggah. Um, but I think that's where that's coming from. Yeah, I just realized the Shach actually thinks that he's just following the the, the other idea we saw that um, Davar Mami doesn't doesn't apply in things where every step- that's Yeah, where well, it's in Tinat Town, yeah. Yeah. Where what? Where it, it only applies for Davar Hasur, right? So it's, if it's Kevat and Nevela, then it applies, but it doesn't apply for the cave of a kosher animal. Oh, why not? We just got through explaining. That's what I was discussing with Lexi, that, that this milk absorbed meat flavor. So this salul milk is totally kosher, um, is totally awesome. So like he thinks that it maybe only applies to something that's like usser, like me'atzmo. Um, and so he's like, this salul stuff wasn't like initially usser me'atzmo. And so he thinks that the, like it only became milk and meat is interaction. A, always milk and meat is not usher about smo, but yet it uh, that seems strange. All milk and meat is by itself kosher, and then it becomes usher, and that's called isser atzmo. Once it's mixed, so why would this be any different? I mean, unless you want to say that kavush kemavush. You could argue is, that's why, as in, like I mean, I think that that's why people who use the zevzegorim argument prefer it to the Basar Bakalab argument. Yeah, I'm trying, um, right. Um, okay. I mean, the, shock, the shock literally says, right? It's it's not it's not instrument. Where are you reading? Yeah, he also he uses Dafka Davarha Mamij Asurma Atmo Mamash Kigon Vela. Um so he's understanding it that it's not really been kavush in a real sense. In other words, yeah, it's just he's a basically tarovit. Kind of treating it as like chetzi basar v'chalav. Like it's like, you know, like there's enough it's a of it being, it's enough basar v'chalavi that we're like worried about it, but it's not so basar v'chalavi that we consider it to be like really just like iser in and of itself. So he considers it mixed together but not cooked together, um, which is interesting. So he's, yeah. 
feel like a lot of factors going on right, here. Right, right. Right, he's basically like, you know, don't write that if I cook to him. You know, Elamid Rabbanan. Kavush is only Mid Rabbanan. Right. He's like, if I have a Nevela thing, that's like a dough right that thing that's usher in and of itself. Whereas, like, or, in this case, if it was salted in, in the thing, then it would only be Durabanan Basar Vachala, then it's all about Nitinat Tam, and so da 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 da. Or if you put a fire under this keva and the and in the stomach and he really heated I mean, it. Yes, because that would be cooking. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think <clears> that uh, Basar Vachal has the inconvenience. Uh, need to have bishul and there are things that are like bishul but yeah. if we don't want but without bishul it's not really basr bachala and, that, and, that, and that's, inconvenient, is that's inconvenient for us but uh or convenient in terms of getting a answer or it's convenient saying look we don't like it it's not a good practice but um, you know what? It, 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 no cigar it doesn't it, it doesn't uh, win out. Yep. Okay, great. Very okay. interesting. I'm, I'm actually I want, later. I'll come back to this. I want to mention some uh, the pitke chuva here. But uh, Isaac, why don't you go to the next sima? Next. Okay. Sima. Um, <clears throat> do you, well, hang on. I'm doing this wrong. Um, share screen. Um, can people see my screen? Yes. Cool. Um, so I wanted to just, um, so two things. Uh, first, Lexi, you did a great job and, um, these, this last Saif is like very closely um, connected to the two Saifin that Lexi did. So um, sort of on the fly, I'm gonna probably end up taking out some stuff that Lexi already covered. Um, so just heads up. And if you see me like accidentally um, enthusiastically doing Khazara, um, you know, uh, give me a heads up. Um, and uh, so the first thing is that I just wanna circle back to is that the tour um, in the last Saif is really just wrapping up what happened in the last two Saifim um, and is um, uh, talking explicitly about what happens if you have this keva that you have salted or you've left sit in, in the stomach lining um, for a full day. Um, and um, so we're going to see what he says on that. Noam, do you want to read just the underlined part at the bottom? Noam? Sorry, sorry. You want me to read the other one? Yeah. The the yeah, underlined. I, I I missed my name. The im hamid bag vinot im yesh bahan benot ten tam asro lerashi afil becharush lerabenu tam betzolo dafka v'chen he maskana adoni aviharaja. So if he makes use the agent as the for the cheeses, um, if uh, they give off um, tam, they're forbidden. And according to Rashi even if they are congealed, but according to Rabbi Tom, if they're liquidy only, then there's an issue. And the latter part is also the conclusion of the Roche. Right. So this is just wrapping up what he said in the previous CA theme, where if you remember, Rashi held that all of the stuff in the stomach, both the, the liquid milk and the nasty congealed milk, I'm sorry, it sounds so gross to me, I can't get over it. Um, uh, are, are like uh, milk proper, whereas Rabbeinu Tam um, holds that only the clear liquid um, stuff is actually milk and that the congealed stuff is, remember, a persia is a secretion and therefore um, is not going to constitute the sarva halab when it sits in that um, stomach um, or gets salted in the stomach. Um, okay, oops. Um, 
Okay. Um, so the Beit Yosef then has an interesting comment um, or interesting quote of the Mordechai on this um, because uh, he then says, well, maybe it's not so clear what we should do. Um, Andres, you want to read the underlined part? כתבו דה מרדכי בשם רשפה מי יודע אם גבינות חשובות כחתיכה הראויה להתכבד ואם יודע שיש אחת שנעשית אה, מ... I don't know, מ... מקבה? יס, מקבה. מקבה האסורה אוסרת כל האחרים. <coughs> So the Mordechai says, according to the Rashba, im Givina, if if somebody knows if the Givina that is considered I think it's more saying, are we really certain that cheese is something that's Ruyala Hit Kabed? Okay. Can it be considered uh Kabed? And if it say mikava surai don't know what it is. Um, so if it's known that there's uh, some cheese that was made um, from from forbidden remnant, um, then it makes the rest of the cheese forbidden as well. Um, so I, I think this is. That I find actually a little confusing. I'm not sure. Well, yeah, what is this keva? Is this keva? This is, goes back to what Joel was saying. That this keva seems to be or a keva, doesn't it? The clean. Yeah. I mean, that would seem to be, well, either it's or a keva or it is, no pun intended, um, the, the keva that sat in that. Um, yeah, keva ha'asura <laughs> could just be like basar v'chalavi keva. Right. Okay. right, and then there's the second question here, right? That sheyesh achat shenaaseit mekeva. So there's one piece of cheese. Is this like there are there are little rounds of cheese? You know, like you make like a camembert or a brie, and like because you know that one was made from from this tray of keva, that um, the others are now aser as well. Like that doesn't yeah. because you assume that maybe it's all made. No, 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 because they mix together. Keva. You don't know which is which. Well, how are they mixed together in the sense of like, I mean, how how do you, like, like what is our circumstance here, right? Like, if, if I make, if, okay, let's say I have, have a room, you have a cheese room, you have a cheese cellar with a hundred, with a hundred cheeses in it. And one of them was made from a keva asura. The other ones are made from a keva muteret. So you don't know which one. Now all other 99 are also us. Yeah, but how do I not know which one? I mean, like, because they're all the identical. cheeses are going to be a different type of ripening, ripening, like I don't remember. I made them a year. I and they've been sitting there for four months, drying. You should, you should make better notes. But you don't remember, whatever okay, reason. I don't remember. I don't remember. All my cheese is awesome. Um, but I, I do find it really interesting that there's this idea that maybe exactly you should take better notes. This is a punishment. I, well, I take better notes. This is a punishment also, for you. To remind you to take better notes next time, all your cheeses are trafe. All my cheeses trafe. It's terrible. Wait. And and if they're basar bachalav, because I mean it, um, then I, I can't really sell them either, right? You can't get hana'a from them. Well, yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Yeah, except that we this is the rabbanan, like we said. But... That's true. It's double the rabbanan. Yeah, probably couldn't sell them. Um. This is just. Um, I mean, I just want to point out that your siman, your sif, sorry, is is different from Lexi because you are actually talking about keva, as where she, or a keva, sorry, where she was talking about keva. It, well, no, no. So, so, so in the well, tour, that's what it says. It says im or keva kasheva. 
Well, that so that was in the bait you'll save, but I think that the tour only makes sense if you understand it as talking about the the cava like the the congealed milk and the the uncongealed milk. Um, yeah, the tour isn't talking about the ore. Um, yeah, the the so that's that's one of the things that's really weird about the CE, or like rather, it's a weirdness of the fact that like people went back and tried to like assign bits of the tour to the city theme of the Shulchan Aruch, um, which is that the, the, the tour here is in the same general topic of how do I congeal my cheese and can I eat my cheese and whatever, but it's not in the same topic specifically of like the Orkeva, whereas the Shulchan Aruch is talking explicitly about the Orkeva um, in Se'if Yod Aleph, whereas the tour is talking about the Keva, that's the milk. Um, and this totally tripped me up, but that's I, that's the only way that the uh, tour makes sense um, if you if you walk through it, right? Because like it's clear that he's talking about the congealed stuff, right? Like it's specifically a filubu karush, right? Like how is he talking about the ore if he's actually talking about the, the congealed? Isaac, okay. yeah. I had a question about the the Safek Rui Ali Kabet, according to, is, I think it was the Mordechai, right? Who's not sure who's has Safek about that. Is his mm -hmm. Safek whether or not a piece of cheese is Rui Ali, or like, you know, a, a block of cheese is Rui Ali Kabet? Because like, do you serve that to a guest? Or is his Safek about whether or not the Devar Hamamid, it makes it Asur Machmat Atzmo or not, right? Mi Basar Bechalav, right? Because remember, we have a principle in, in uh, Rui Ali Kabet that it's only if it's if it's a sur machmat that's mo that it can be really kabed, that it's not batel, right? Yeah, well, I know there's point. a whole discussion about this where they where they like talk about well, about I know people that brought cheeses in front of uh, important people. In other words, okay. I think the question is really whether cheese is considered an important food. Mm -hmm. It's about the chashivut of cheese and not about, about like the, the devar hamamid and whatnot. That I mean, your point sense. is very well taken, but I think that it could be that was the point, but I, I do recall that that's, that's the argument here about, about, not about what you said, about, but about the chashivut of cheese. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's how I understood it, although, yeah. Because does that make a difference how we paskin about the asfeka in terms of uh, um, reality kabed about whether or not it's it's about whether or not we're safek about the thing itself is really a better or whether or not it's a safek about whether or not that it it actually fits the category. You know, there's like it's it's a fake about the kashi movers, it's a fake about the category, right? Or different uh different uh paths to take, if I remember correctly. I don't I, I'm blanking which one goes which way at the moment. But mm -hmm. yes, there is there is definitely a talk about that. Um mm -hmm. let's leave that for now. Okay, great. Just wanted to bring it up. So cool. Um, so we're going to go now to laying the groundwork for the um, Shulchan Aruch. Um, and we're going to leave the tour behind. Um, the tour has now wrapped up talking about uh, milk congealed and liquid in the stomach. And um, Rav Nachum, how much time do I have? Um, I, you know, I would like you to finish by at five after 10 if you could, but I don't know. So what is that? Like 10 then, minutes? Yeah. Minutes? I mean, I don't know how much you need, but yeah. Okay, whatever. Let's do this fast um, or try. Um, so basically our, our questions um, for making cheese from um, uh, that we're gonna cover are, um, is our issue basar bachalav or is it nivela? Um, uh, can either of those be batel? Um, and then, now we're going to focus on uh, curdling with part of the stomach skin. Um, we already covered liquid milk versus coagulated milk, and then kosher animals versus non-kosher animals, where they checked it or not. Um, and we're going to skip the Gemara. Yeah. Um, and are we going to do the chose vote? Um, Okay, we're um, going to do toast vote. Um, and uh, Asher, do you want to read toast vote? I've been having uh, unstable internet and I've conked out already six times this evening. So maybe it's better somebody else, just in okay. case I'm not here the whole time. 
Tikva, do you want to read? Yeah. So he's asking on the Gemara where well, why are we saying right that the the cheese of the Ode Kochamim? Um why is the issue um Nevela, even if it's kosher, it would be Basa Bechal. Um yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's sorry. No, go ahead. Sorry. Um Right, so he's saying, but it's only an Isra de Rabbanan um, because it's not actually de Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's saying it's not actually cooked, which is interesting because, like, yeah. I would think that when you make the cheese, you actually do cook the, the ore and the milk, right? But he's saying, yeah. No, cheese, I don't think cheese is cooked. Yeah, it is. Yeah, you boil it. So to make cheese, you have to, you have to heat them. Oh, milk. yeah, you're right, you're right. You have to add the, the rennet, and then it coagulates. And... But maybe Tosafot doesn't know how to make cheese. I don't know. Um, or maybe they make cheese differently. Um, uh, okay. So Tosafot is wondering why we're worried about the, the skin um, when um, uh, specifically of Okdei Kochamim, uh, because it would seem like this, uh, that would make it Nivela, but we, wouldn't we also have a problem if we use the skin of a kosher animal? Okay. How do I? Okay. Um, Rashba, I believe Lexi covered this. Um, that basically, um, if you are using um, uh, the the stomach skin from a treif animal, then that's osser and the cheese that makes is osser. But if you're using the skin of a kosher animal that was shechted. Um, if there's no tin ta'am, that's a sore. Um, uh, but if there's um, no um, um, no tin ta'am, it's mutar. Um, okay. We're skipping that Gemara. Um, what do we want to do from the Mishneh Torah? Um, Okay, um, does someone want to read uh, the, the left side for the Rambam? Because I think that's the main thing that we want to get covered. I can read it. Cool, yeah, let's go. Asula amid gvina bohor hakeva shashkuta. Veime amid toemet ha gvina im yesh ba tam basar asura veim lav muter. Uh, now, in other words, it's a kosher animal, and this uh, or keva is kosher meat, so it's mutar, so it's mutar. Well, um, it's, it's only mutar bediavad, right? Because opposed as opposed to the Rashma, no, he's uh, saying no. I didn't mean just the keva. I just mean the I just meant the or keva is oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The or keva is muteret, and therefore im hamid. You're quite right. Im hamid. In other words, if you did it, it's still forbidden to do it. But if you did it, you could just taste it for milk and meat. Vein kan el iser basar chalav shiur benotet tam. So just taste it. Of course, by Ashkenazi, that would mean you need sixty. Aval hamamid ba or keva nevelo treifa ubeim to me a hoil ve amamid devar ha asur bipne atzmo nesar gvina mishum nevela lo mishum basar bechalal 
So the mamid, the fact that it's mamid with the nevela is going to cause the cheese to be considered like it's a, it itself is a nevela, and therefore it's asr. Right. And since we're worried that we that they may have used a animal that was a tray for not properly shechted, I mean obviously the goyim are not going to use a kosher animal. That's why we um, forbid gentile cheese because of this worry. Right. And notice that <laughs> Rambam is also explicitly pointing out that basar b'chalab cannot apply with nevelan meat, right? You have to have kosher meat. Um, and well, we've already established this principle, but just... That's true, but that's not, that's not, I don't think he's forced, I mean, that's true, he says it other places. I don't think he says it here. Here he's just right. saying. I'm just saying yeah. he's, he's, he's pointing it out here. And I just want to, because because we entertained, Tosafot sort of entertained the idea that like something, Tosafot was sort of implying that there's a a parallel between using the aura of the Nebela and the aura of the like Behemah Kishera of the Shekhuta, right? Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we, we haven't gotten twisted around there. Um, I think mm -hmm. Tosafot's wording is a little. I, um... I'm Sorry. struck by the fact that the case in the veil is a pre-existing condition. And then the, so? question, the question is, how far does it go? Well, mm. Basar B'chalav, there may never have been an Easter of Basar B'chalav. You taste it. There's no taste there. And there's no problem. That's why, in a certain sense, it's even better to uh, taste it. Because there's no pre -existing. You only have a pre-existing condition of heter. The Basar's mutter, the Chal's mutter. But when it comes, so you need that, you need it. But in the Vela, you really got a Pachad there, I think, a fear, because you already have an Easter. Anyway. Gotcha. Okay. We did the tour, did the Yosef. Okay, let's go to the Shulchan Aruch. Um, cycle back. Oh. Um, did I, Joel, do you want to read the Shulchan Aruch? Whoops, sorry. Sure. I can just read it right out of the, I'll read it off the screen. Uh, so this is exactly what the Rabbam says, right? This is the Diafad situation, right? If you use a kosher animal, um, assumingly that it's shuta. Um, but uh, um, right? But in that case, it's Devar Mamid, it's Oser Becholshu, who, because it was Devar Mamid that was Asur on its own. So I'm interpreting the Shulchan Aruch here a little bit. But, uh, no, I think, I think, I think it works. Yeah. So please. So. Haga. Um, oh, should I keep going with the Ramah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right, and he gets that from the Kachatav Beit Yosef Ladata Rashba Ve'aran. Bedavka shelo hayasham mamid acher, rak hasur. Aval im hayasham gam ken mamid heter. Have zevze gorem umutar imika shishim neged hasur. This is exactly what we were talking about. We were hoping the Rama would have said. I was hoping the Rama would have said earlier. He says it here, right? That. We're only talking about the case, though, where there's only one Devar Mamid and not the Devar that's uh, Devar Sor and Devar Mutar, because in that case, we have right. Zevazim Gorem as the principal, and then we just need 60 against the Yisr. Right. Um, that was a good summary of exactly what we learned with Lexi. Um, oops, hang on. Um, okay. So we have. Minutes. Um, uh, Yavni, do you want to read um, the Shach here? Um, Avala Mamid Baor Keva Nevela. A Hiluk Beze, Katua Poskim, the Or Keva, Shera, Mehar Mehar Shumutar Bifnat Smo, Velit Be Isu, Ella Mishum Hiburo, Imagvina. כל אמת לא יהיב תאמה לב בשר בחלב הוא, אלא היי באפי קאי והיי באפי קאי, אבל אור נבלה וכיוצא בו שאסור מעצמו, כיוון שהוא מעמיד, אנו רואים כאילו האיסור בעין, 
ומהרשל פסק בפרק כל הבשר, סימן קו"ו, דאפילו המעמיד באור קיבה נבלה בטל ואין דבריו מוכרחים ואין דבריו מוכרחים, והמחבר הזיל לטעמי דסביר עלי לקמן ראש סימן צדיק ח' דסמכינן אטעימת העובד כוכבים, לכך כתב סתם אם יש ביתם בשר, אבל ענן קיימלן דלא סמכינן היידנה אטעימת עובד כוכבים, וכמו שכתוב הרב בהגה שם בהילקח, והילקח לעולם משערים לן בשישים. Would you like me to translate all of it, the underlying parts? Just give a general summary or, yeah. Why don't you give a general summary with an emphasis on the underlying parts? I'm sorry. Sure. So we saw again what we saw, what we saw earlier that there's a, that there's a distinction made between something that is the, between the, the keva, if it is itself uh, kosher, even if it's, even if you might have a b'chalav case, then uh, that's what we said about the, um, the, uh, that being benotentam as opposed to something that's a sur itself, um, like o nevela, and that, uh, uh, in which case, um, um, because it's ma'amid, we don't care about not in time and it can't be batel. Um, but the Marshal says that, it, that, uh, that even the old kevat nevela could be batel, but, uh, but it seems like we don't, that's not a likely for us. Um, and, and then there's issue of whether or not we trust the Ozeir Kochavim in their, oh, it's, it, oh, this is where, where we, whether we ask them to taste it or, or what we just have the practice of, uh, of, uh, of estimating in 60 rather than from the boy to, to taste it. Right, and this was the question of how to tie well, so he's not actually doing he's just rehashing the opinions that uh, we already expressed. Right. Cool. Um, all right, I think I'm going to have to stop you here. Yeah, the last thing was going to be on the Ramah, but Lex already covered that, so we're all good. Okay, um, so let's take a break here. Thank you very much, Isaac. I'm sorry that uh, there was that overlap and you uh, couldn't do all the things that you, uh, but that no, no, Lexi and you good. both covered it's, you know, similar it's, things. It's a complicated set of Siggy theme in terms of how to break them down. Uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's take a break for a minute and let's come back at Cordy. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're on to a new Siman. Um, Siman 88. Uh, you present. So I said I shared with you all this um let's say it, you have, but I'll show it, I'll show it to my screen. Um, here we have first Gemara we'll try to do this uh, in the time we have um uh Lexi you want to read this Mishnah sure fine I can't eat any like flesh with dairy besides fish and grasshoppers can't put them on the same table can't eat them if i swear off of flesh and so therefore also included here is chicken they can't put chicken on the table i mean the part i underline is the part that's relevant for us that you can't put onto the same table with uh uh meat with milk i guess with milk um you know chicken Okay, what does Rashi say? Asur la'alot. What's the what's the chashash? Asur la'alot. Yom ati ele michinu ki hadaday de kanege balei mahadaday va'afalgav shmutar le'echol basar achar gvina k'da aminan begemara. Um, right, like lest I come to eat um both of these things, like they might touch one another and absorb. Um, and even though I can eat like meat like after gvina, technically according to. The Gemara, 
um, if I whatever clean things out, like I shouldn't be eating them at the same time. Right. So even though it's not cooked together, it just eating them together is going to be a problem. Of course, um, well, we're going to see this is it's rabbinic to not eat them together. It's also rabbinic not to put them on the table together. So so read on in the Gemara Alexa, if you would. Like, well, we must, like, Basar Of and Chalav must be a Dorita, because otherwise we say there's so many Dorabanans that work here. Like, oh, you're doing a Xera, putting them on the same Shulchan, unless you come to eat them together, which is already Dorabanan even with other meat. And like, say, plus the Dorabanan, this is, oh, he's like, that's too much. So now look away, look at the direction of the Gemara now. Read the next part. The direction of the Gemara is not to, is, is to say, what's the problem? So go ahead. Yeah, and then it goes, okay. Why, why don't we? Um, although this would really be like... Not why don't we. Translate that a little bit better. Um, like from where do you say that we don't like put a Xera on a Xera? In other words, maybe um, we do. Maybe we very well do put a Xera on a Xera. Although this really, this would be like with Gazar Oaf, it would be like a Xera on a Xera on a Xera. Why? Because it would be a Xera on me putting them oh, um, I see. You're right. on the same table, lest I come to eat them together, lest I come to eat like mamish basar and challah together, lest I come to cook basar and challah Yeah, you're right. Okay, you're right. In other words, anyway, the, the chashash is only an iser uh, de Rabbanan. I mean, yes. the Gemara is going to go there. Yes. Normally, normally, go there. No, so we're going to go there. Saying, we're going to go in that direction. <clears throat> uh, Rabbi uh, Landis? Yeah, no. In this case, we say Gezerah and Gezerah. Uh, yeah, but it's all part of the same Gezerah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's what we're going to say. This is the source for this idea. So let's just see this. Oh, okay. Excuse me. So we have the Tanan. Chalat chotelet aretz na chalat imazar al shulchan. Um, so chalav chutz la'aret can be eaten with non koanim on the shulchan together. Now, what's the status um, of chalav of, of chalat chutz la'aret? It's like a super weak derabanan. Okay. Um, and you can and, eat it with people who are forbidden to eat it, like a czar. Yes. Um, and yeah, so you can just have it on the same. I'm a kohen. I have like non koanim at my meal. I can put my chalat chutz la'aret on the table, and we can eat it, and it's fine. Um, and so Abai is like, fine, like, um, he's like, I actually, I'm not a total expert on this. This is mean that was brought into the land. Um, and it's like, lest you come, um, to eat like, right? So like if, if, like, even if it was technically, but you know, da, 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 but like I'm eating it in Eretz Yisrael, and so we're worried that you're going to come to actually eat chalat haaretz, so you would call it. Um, in other words, but wait, let's just say. In other words, what we're what we're saying here is like this. Here is my proof that you don't do a gazera and a gazera. Since chalat chutz haaretz is a gazera in itself, therefore we're not going to make a gazera that you can't eat it together with a person who's a czar. Uh, you know, right. he's like, he's like, the that whole, would be a gazera and a gazera. Right, because the gazera of not eating chalat ha'aretz, like on a table with a czar, would already be a gazera lest the czarim come to eat it. And so if I put a gazera on the chalat chutzla aretz, then I'm putting a gazera on that lest I come to put chalat ha'aretz on a table with these things, right. lest people come. Czarim and therefore, come and, and therefore, and that's our source it. for gazera to gazera being uh, not done. And Abaya yeah. answers. Um, right. He's saying, so like, he's like, so chalet, like, uh, the chalet, cool. It's like, Mishim Deleka Lemig Zarhu. It's like, we're not gonna, I'm not gonna put this Xera in place on a, on another Xera that already exists. Um, wait, 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 let me go back. 
Amar Leia Baye. So Bishlama i Ashmaina and Chala Chutzla Aretz. Ba'aretz. If you were talking about a case where he brought um, Chutzla Aretz Chala into Israel, into Eretz Israel, then I would have made a Gezerah. Ikadamek Zarmishum Chala Aretz. Do right to the Logazrina. And, and, and then, I, in other words, the, if you would have told me that in a case where he brought it into, into Israel and he and even there we let the Kohen eat it with the now, of course, what's what's the Isser? The Isser is still the same Isser. It's still Hala Chutzlaretz. He's still outside of there, Air, but he's inside of Eretz Israel. But so what? I'm worried that it'll then lead people who are in Eretz Israel who are generally interacting with Hala Ta'aretz. To... Right then, I could understand that we're not that not making gazera here would be a great proof, because really there's a real chashash that you might eat to chala. But since this is a gazera to a gazera, we're not going to do it. But that wasn't the case. The case was in Chutzlaretz. Now, if the case would be in Eretz Israel. If the case would be in Eretz Israel, then I have a real chashash that I might come to confuse it with Eretz Israel chala, and then get to a deraita. And if you would tell me that I don't make that gezera, then I understand that in goes in gezera le gezera is a rule. But your case is so far away; it's there's no actual chashash of deraita at all here, because I'm in chutzlarts. What confusion can I make? Nothing in this country of France or wherever I am is going to ever get confused. So you're never going to get me to a direct level. So that's why I didn't make a gazera because in other words, that's why I didn't make a gazera to a gazera. But, but in our case, where you might come to eat milk and meat that's cooked together, I could come to a real direct them. So in other words, we're already seeing that gazera to gazera when we say we don't make a gazera to a gazera, what we mean is if our, we don't make a gazera when our hashash is only about a derabanan. But if we have a hashash that's deraita, then even if there may be several steps, maybe three or four steps, I could still make a gazera because eventually there's a deraita out there that I will get to. Can I um, suggest that, like, just run a night I guess by you is it it's part of the concern like when we make a gazera right we're trying to avoid another um outcome we're trying to create this fence so it's part of it, the idea of a routine action so that you you're conditioned to a certain way of behavior versus an immediate hashash like in the in the case of chutzah art you don't have any immediate concern of actually coming to this breaking in there right that you're just trying to get the idea in your head of maintaining this division of certain, you know, food, you, you know, that that would be if you were in Eretz Yisrael, you would want to be conditioned to dividing and having this way of looking at, at food, right? Whereas when you're actually there in Eretz Yisrael, you have an immediate, um, an immediate concern that you might actually overset the right So it's like that that different wow. that different types of gazeras between, you know lifelong conditioning of like a framework for looking at the world and an actual immediate concern in the moment. I, I like what you're saying. I mean, I, but I, I think that in both cases, there's a, 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 a training because in Eretz Israel, we want, we might say, in other words, the Gemara is leaving it as an open question. We might say that in Eretz Israel, you can't sit at the same table with a czar if you're eating challah, if you're a Kohen. When we said that we are allowed to do it, it was only in Chutzlar. It was only Chalat Chutzlar in Chutzlar. But maybe in Eretz Israel, Chalat Chutzlar, you shouldn't sit at the same table because we want to teach you never to do that. Because if you would be lenient with Chalat Chutzlar in Eretz Israel, you might become lenient with Chala of Eretz Israel in Eretz Israel. And then you might confuse it, and the Tsar might actually take some and eat it. So I think either way, we're conditioning a life behavior. Um, it's the question, but you're right. The question is how, you know, is there an actual chashash that we'll get to? 
And in Eretz Israel, there's a real chashash because we have real the right to chala in Eretz Israel. <clears throat> how, how much of a czar is a czar in Chutzlars? In other words, everybody really is mutter to eat this stuff. They, in in other words, these distinctions, not just on the, in this case, not just on the chapsas, but it's really on the gabra. In other words, you just, we don't worry about it. I mean, we don't think about it. Well, they apparently were eating kohanim, were apparently eating kala and chutzlar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's really important. It's one of the questions, like, how, how long did that exist, you know? How long yeah, did that exist? I don't know how long. Well, I mean, it's a, it, yeah, it's a good question about reality. I didn't see it. I didn't see it growing up. You know. <laughs> By the way, that yeah, there is a distinction between. Well, anyway, so let, let's go back to the Gemara. So again, Amar Abaye, Amar Le Abaye, Bishlama Iashmina and Chala Chutzlar, the Ikele Migzar Mishum. Because I, then I would think that I should move, be it, make a Gezer Mishum Chala Taharetz. Because of how you have to write them. And if you would tell me they're Logazrinan, then Ika Lemash Mamine, then you would teach me your rule of Ain Gozrin Gezeira the Gezeira. Ella Chutzla Aretz. Mishum de Leka Lemigzarhu. The reason that they didn't make a Gezeira to Gezeira is because there's no Chashash there. In other words, you'll never come to a Doraita in Chutzla Aretz. And that's why they didn't do it. So really, we can do a gazera to a gazera when there's a legitimate to right to concern that's eventually down the road. Avalhacha i sharit le la asuke of ugvina. If we would let you put chicken and cheese on the same table, ati la asuke basavagvina, then you would come to put real meat. And cheese. And then you would eat milk and meat, which is this doraita. In other words, and, and in such a case, says Abaye, where goes our gazera to gazera. That, that, that whole concept of, of oh, low goes read gazera, the gazera is only where the final, down the road, there's still never going to be a doraita. But when this is a down no, the road, there is the where our goes are gazera to the So you didn't bring in a good proof. And therefore, I, chicken is the rabbana. But I, but I would add that the chicken is already meat. In other words, we, we, we're already always treating it like meat. So it's really yeah. a problem. That, yeah, that's, that's the way we said it. But I, I'm learning from this Gemara. That's what we always said up to now. But I'm learning from this Gemara a general concept that applies also to the chicken, which is that 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 we have in our heads logos in gazera the gazera, but that really should be applied only in a very limited case, and actually we don't usually apply angos in gazera the gazera. I'm, I'm I'm giving you a new understanding of angos in gazera gazera. It only means where the final result is the rabbanat, but where the final result could actually lead to a chashash to raita, then vakasha make then your gazera. In other words, then you do go but, there, because there, there. But, but it being at the table, isn't the Doraita only cooking? Like, oh, so that's the next together? piece of the Gemara, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. are yeah. thinking like an Amara. Here, so it says, Mat Kifla Rav Sheshit. So Rav Sheshit says, So, 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 but so, and who? What are you talking about? What's the Raita? There's no Doraita here. Very nice story you told us about, eh? That this distinction matters whether it's the Raita or the Rabbanan at the end. But this is still the Rabbanan. I'm Rabbi Yeh. No, <laughs> he says there is a right. Gezeira shemi yale be ilfas rotachat. Maybe you'll put it on a, a boiling hot ilfas, like a, a serving tray, with some kind of clay pot, and then so so so, so then you're cooking, and and it's also right. In other words, I don't know exactly bringing a hot plate, a hot pot to the table of chicken. And there's cheese on the table. Maybe somebody will drop a piece of cheese into the chicken. And then you're cooking. So they say, but wait a second, it's still the Rabbanan. Look how many, look how many levels we got here. Klisheni who, but klisheni ain't no Oh, so he says, Ella Gezeira Shema Yale Be'ilfas Risho. He says, no, 
we're worried that you might bring an Ilfas Risha, the actual pot that you cooked with. Now, there are some Rishonim that say, well, wait a second, that's still not Bishal because it's a Kli Risha off of the fire, maybe it's not really Bishal. So there's actually some Rishonim that say, no, and you maybe were Achashash, that you'll bring coals to the table and you'll have the Ilfas on it. In other words, the Gemara, or at least Abaye, I mean, I don't know how to take this Gemara. I'm assuming that Abaye is right, you know. But let's say Abaye is holding that as long as there's a, as, as long as there's a, any chashash that you could eventually come to it is a direita, however far down the road, then we're entitled to make our gazera. Don't put milk on the same table as meat because you're gonna. It could lead to a confusion eventually down the road. As opposed to a case like Kutzlar, it's where you'll never get to an issue to write. Unless you got on a jet plane or something. Okay, so we can take away from this Gemara. We can learn from this Gemara that there is room to permit a Gezeira to a Gezeira where an actual issue Torah could occur. That's what I was trying to say. However far, however far removed it is. But all agree we don't make a Gezeira where there is no possible way to come to this Torah. Like, for example, eating Chal outside of Israel. We also learned that the Kli Rishon off the fire is called Bishel, at least not according to those Rishonim, for constituting the Yisra of cooking milk and meat by extension. And by extension, it's also forbidden by the Torah on Shabbat. Okay. There are Rishonim that learn you bring the Ilfas with coals under. Right? That's what I said. And most obviously, the third thing we learned, that you cannot eat chicken and milk on the same table. <laughs> that, that was actually the main point. Uh, lest you come to bring a boiling hot meat to the table and might put some cheese into it. Okay, so that's our Gemara. <coughs> Anyone want to add something? Okay. Uh, Nachum, no chicken parmesan this Shabbos at your house? No. I, I think I, I had a dream about chicken parmesan, but... Uh, <laughs> I think in your dreams you're permitted to eat it. Okay. I can tell you a story about Brandeis University, but that's another time. Um, Matnitin. So wait, Yavdi, you want to read this, Mishnah? Sure. Matnitin. Ha'of ole imagvina ala shulchan ve'eno ne'echal divrei Actually, you know what? I take right back. We don't have so much time. Let's skip this one. This is not so important. Um, this is important, though. Wait, uh, a, yeah, yeah. This is important. So read this Mishnah. Matninin sorer adam basar vegvina v'mitpachat achat u'bilvad shelo yehu nogin ze beze. Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel omer shne achsanain ochlin al shulchan achad ze basar veze gvina ve'en choshashim. We can, you can. Uh, uh, wrap up uh, meat and cheese together in one like one curt one cloth one handkerchief um, and as long as they're not actually making contact with each other and well uh, when Gamliel says the two um, in two travelers uh, can eat um, at the same table one eating meat and one eating cheese and they don't have to worry Right. Uh, so this this is yeah. the second part. The first part is a different siman we'll get to. But the second part that I underline seems to, and, you know, in a, at least limit in a limited way, contradict what we said before, or at least limit what we said before. Now we're saying you could put meat and cheese, even meat, not even chicken, but meat on the same table and eat them together with the proviso that you well, are travelers right it, or, not not one one person can't have them at the same table even so about two different people as long as you're right travelers. yeah well that's interesting but it's two right you're right there's two distinctions before we had um a sewer right before it was like the same person presumably but it, and here we have yeah. two different ways two different requirements to allow this there's two people and they're and they're not just regular two different people they're you know, it's, it's like you're in a hotel and you have a table, there's a limited number of tables, so you're sitting at the same table with somebody else, but you're not, you, you're not eating with him. You just, you're just sharing a table. And then you could do it. So read the Gemara here. Amar um, Hanan Bar Ami, Amar Shmuel, Lo shanu ela she'en mekirin ze et ze. 
אבל מכירים זה את זה, אסור. So we're only talking about two travelers who don't know each other. If they know each other, then it's אסור for them to be eating one milk and one meat at the same table. תעניין נעמי הכי, רבן שמעון בן גבליאל אומר, שני אכסנאים שנתארחו בפונדק אחד, זה בא מן הצפון וזה בא מן הדרום, זה בא ב... חתיכתו, זה בא בגבינתו, זה אה, אוכלין על שולחן אחד, זה בשר וזה גבינה ואין חוששין. לא אסור אלא בתפיסה אחת. תפיסה אחת סילק דעתך, אלא כאין תפיסה אחת. They, uh, they forbid it when it's Tfisa Achat. Tfisa right. will assume that it means for now one tablecloth. Oh. Let's say that's what it means. One grouping. One, some kind of, you know, Litfos is right. I don't know. One, one, right, one. one sort of grouping. So maybe one tablecloth in, in, or in close proximity. And now we right. say Tfisa Achat Sal Chadad Chad. Could you think that? No. So let's look at Rashi. Rashi says, So I'm translating not to mean like in one sandwich, which would be insane, or even in like one wrapping. I think it was that you, don't, you don't wrap things when you're eating them. So I think what it means is, that's why I say one tablecloth. In other words, one, one spot. One okay. tablecloth. And then we say, Tfisa achat zachadadcha. Ha, belo shulchan sheochel alav, nami asur. So, um, or maybe it means a wrapping, one wrapping. In other words. Uh, yeah, I, I think the Havamina is supposed to be really out there. Right? I, I You think I the Havamina is supposed to be what? Like really extreme, like that, that. That's why the Gemara is so surprised. I think I think you're you're biting back the Gemara's punch a little bit yeah. by saying they're not dafka next to each other. I think I think when the Brita says to be they you it seems to actually mean that, and you're that's right. why Look, the Gemara has to. Where, according, this is what I wrote. According to Rashi, to is where they are in close proximity or even touching. Okay, so I did say touching. So not being in a to You Must could, you could say it, Nachum, you could say it, that when, you know, the guy's uh, going for his meat, it's so close that he would pick up the cheese. Right. They're in the same, they're in a box together. They're in some kind of, the krachecha. They're in some kind of close proximity. And then we say, and then Rashi says, Tvisa the Gemara is, in, in Noam's words, the bite of the Gemara is, Tvisa ha below shulchan shalchin olav nami asur. If it, if, if, Even if they wouldn't be eating on the same table, they'd be eating on two different park benches. But it was all in the same box, so it should be Asur, because they probably touched each other. So, so what did I say? So not being in a Tfisa Achat must mean they are far apart, right? Well, if, if being in a Tfisa Achat means they're in close proximity, so not being in a Tfisa Achat must mean they're not in that cardboard box. So, so and here's my explanation. So, Well, so we, the Gemara is going to now say, so it doesn't, but before we get to my explanation, let's finish that Gemara. Um, so that's what Tvisa Achat. Ela ke'en Tvisa Achat. Rather, it's like it's in a cardboard box. What does that mean? It's like it's in a krach What could that mean? It's not in a box together, but it's like it's in a box together. I actually, this is why I actually like Krach as like one sandwich, essentially. You know, like the first Rashi there, that he's literally is saying. But how could two people be eating well, it's food a, in I, the same sandwich and one is milk and one is meat? I, I think that's what the Gemara is saying. Like that doesn't make, Tfisa though, it sounds like it's like a handful almost. Like I could just grab them both at the same time, right? And and put them in my mouth. And and I think that the Gemara is like, come on, that can't be the case. It's got to be something a little bit more, you so know. So still, according to you, what is Ain? I accept what you're saying. Yeah. So what is Ain like, Tvisa? They're sitting next to each other. It's like they're sharing a meal. Yeah, I can reach over and grab some of their food, right? So it's like. So they're in close, pro so that's exactly what I say. 
Yeah. Here, let's see what I let's look at Perush Nachum. Um, where is it? No, I lost. Now I'm totally lost. I lost my place. Can they use bread as plates and serving bowls? Could it be something along those lines that the bread is actually some kind of platter that they're eating off of? Okay, but that would still be Tvisa Achat, right? Yeah. Right, but I want to know what's Kain Tvisa Achat. So I'm saying this. So Kain Tvisa Achat must mean that they're apart. They're not together. But they look like they are touching. For example, here's where I was getting, I was confusing my conclusion with the beginning. For example, they're on one tablecloth without any markers separating them. And this implies... You're really reading the conclusion that we want into that, aren't you? Yeah, I, I am kind of reading it, but I'm, I'm showing you how you... How that's the, I'm trying to show how... That's the only way to get That's the only way to read it. In other words, we just now said that Tvisa Achat is Asr, but Te'en Tvisa Achat is also Asr. Right? So what's not Te'en Tvisa Achat? We have three levels. We have Tvisa Achat, that's Asr, that they're touching. Te'en Tvisa Achat is also Asr, but that must be where they're not touching. So that must be that they're like close to each other. What does it mean they're not touching? Everything is not touching. What does that mean? The things in the supermarket are not touching everything. So it must be they're, they're close, but they're not touching. So that's why I say tablecloth, something that looks like they're touching. They're close. So what makes something not, it could be a, some kind of marker, or we're going to see later, the, see the Bach, see the Bach who quotes, the Bach in the, on the Beis Yosef, who, who quote, or on, on the tour, who quotes the Marshal that distance will, of course, also help. That's according to everybody. In other words, if they're in it far apart, then that's for sure okay. But what I'm saying is, so that's not what we're talking about. So what's Ke'en Tfisachat? Ke'en Tfisachat is that they're close together. And not Ke'en Tfisachat is either that there's a distance or something that makes them clearly not Ke'en Tfisachat. That makes them clearly not close together. So that's where we get the idea of a marker. You're right. I'm, I'm, I'm showing, I'm trying to really um, prove that that's what Rashi is saying. And this implies that a marker would permit them to use the same table, would permit them to use the same table. I just went through the logical steps. Um, you, you went through the logical steps of Tosos' first explanation. Yeah. Well, I, it also doesn't, I say, I, 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 you know, in my humble opinion, of course, I think I said it more clearly than Tosos. You, you certainly did. <laughs> so let's see what Tosos says. So wait a second. So that's Ka'in. In better English. In, yeah, my English is, his English is terrible. Ka'in um, Tvisa. Amr Lei. Wait, we just didn't finish this. Ka'in Tvisa. So here, read this last part, Yadni. Amr Lei. Vav Yemar Bar Shalme Laabaye Shnei Achin Hamakpidin Zeal Zemahu. So Rav Yemar Bar Shalme asked Abaye, what if there are two brothers, but they're really careful not to eat from one from the other's food? And I don't remember, I'm trying to remember the cases, but it's like, oh, so someone can say like, oh, this is all a soul, but because I'm, but, but because I'm careful about it, um, I'm allowed to do it. Yeah, so this is also a very important, just like I, I was discussing before about a gazera to a gazera and trying to give you a new way to understand that. Here's also a new, a new concept. Um, so this is, srikin means like uh, matzot, it's talking about matzah, it's talking about matzah, that they forbid matzah that is, um, that is like, you know, Etched. cut with lines, cut with lines or made in a certain way, made in a fancy way. And why did they forbid it? Because you'll take too long, it'll take more than 18 minutes, and it'll become chametz. But this guy, Baitus, says, I have a special form that I can make it in one stamp. I can just stamp down on the matzah and put all the lines there at once. So it won't take any time, so you should let me. So they said, no, we can't let you. Yomru kol asrikin asurin. People will say, all asrikin are asur, but asrikin shall baitus is mutter, but why is his permitted? It'll confuse people. It will be a, an untenable law. People will say, well, what, he got his, he paid, he bribed somebody? 
what's the difference? They don't see any difference. Either way, they look the same. And these ones are mutter and these ones are asr. So the way I explained this here, I thought about how to write this. We do not grant individual exceptions to the gazera, even where it seems reasonable. In other words, it seems reasonable to give him an exception to the gazera. We don't. The Gemara goes on to, oh, I can't read that. Um, somebody read that to me. To explain that anyone with one, ah, shirt, anyone may on with one shirt may wash it on Cholomoy. And what I what I want to distinguish between those two cases is a, is a, is an important nikuda, important uh, point, which is that anyone with one shirt may wash it. Now we're not; it's not individual. It's not respecting a particular person, a particular um, type of person, or named person, but anybody with one shirt. In other words. People will see you washing your shirt and say, oh, it must be he has only one shirt. And that's, so therefore, we can let him do that, even though washing on cholam, washing clothes on cholamot is forbidden. But this guy's got only one shirt. So if I see somebody washing, I'll assume he's he's that category. But I can't do that. I can't say, oh, I'll assume this guy is baitus. In other words, I in other words, it's, it, it's uh, becomes, it's too specific. It has to be something that anybody could, uh, do it could apply to anybody given certain circumstances not that i mean you could I, I, I whatever not that the person himself has a certain behavior that's unusual no it's, it's unusual that he has this special instrument and therefore it's permitted not everybody's gonna be able to get a special instrument but everybody might have one shirt it's a but, is, but is hating someone so unusual yeah me, 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 no, meaning like I, I totally get the distinction between Baitus and the, and the Washington Colomoid, right? But people not liking each other, that's not, that's not so far afield. I don't know what you're that talking about. Really anyone. What are you talking about hating? Is that how you're translating? The Achim Shem Achbidim. Well, if you notice, that's not the way Yavni translated. It. And I didn't change, I didn't correct him. He, he translated it as that are very careful. Mm -hmm. But fine, either way, yeah, because I'll look at them. In other words, you're right. I, I, I want to go with what you're saying now. In other words, wh why is this, why is the Makpidim more similar to um, the case of Baitus than the case of the Kolomoi, where we do permit? And I, I want to say that, I, I, well, I mean, we have to think about that. That's what the Gemara is saying. So I think that you can't know. Notice, I can't just say, well, I'm Makhpid, you know. What I mean, I just, I just pronounce on myself, I'm Makhpid. We're, we're Makhpid, whatever Makhpid means. I, we don't like each other, so therefore we can do it. But, you know, in other words, we don't want to just uh, have a situation where a person can say, I'm Baitus. So I can do that. Words, we have no way of knowing what, what's really going on. Rev, Rev Nachum? Yeah. Right. In the case of right of the someone only has one uh one shirt for you know on Cholamoed, right? The great thing is language, right? Is a row, what was it uh Mochia Chalav, right? There's there's an, a visual proof for everybody versus like, how do we know if two brothers are, you know, actually there's no proof that these brothers are more Makhpi than any other brothers. In right. the same way there's no visual proof to, to anybody else that, you know, um uh, you know, this one method. What's the visual? The visual proof is that we see him taking off his shirt. Or we, well, we see well, the way Rashi plays out is that you see that the belt essentially gets washed with the shirt, right? Because right, uh, right, right. In other words, yeah, he's doing. Yeah, and the but what about Baitus? He's also got a different plea. He's got that special plea. I, I was wondering about that. I haven't made it work with that yet, but uh, he. I mean. Yeah. yeah. So in other words, we are willing to make exceptions. I was trying to say we're willing to make exceptions where it applies to equally to everyone and not where it applies to certain categories of people like and but maybe, you know, maybe by maybe the brothers, maybe it's also like Rashi is saying that it has to do with uh, how whether it's just your word for it, whether we just take your word for it or you have some kind of clear visual proof. 
it doesn't sound um, like we know we know actually that Bytos's method works, right? We just it's a personal claim, isn't it? Of this, the <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, it's very anyway. I thought this was very interesting. The the when do we make gazeras and when do we not make gazeras? When do we make exceptions to gazeras? And we can make exceptions when there's some kind of clear um, explanation, clear sh demonstration that he is different from the category. And that it's clear to all, and maybe that it's open. Maybe there's equal opportunity in that exception. That's what I was saying. All right, let's. We don't have. We don't have any time. Um, but Tosfos says, let's just see this Tosfos. Let's just skip to the second explanation of Tosfos. Um, Rav Malcolm, real quick, it, just back to his bite thing. It might be because the the final product looks the same. Um, me, me, right. So, okay, Baitus might have his clee, right? But out of the out of his house, out of his matza shop, they all look the same. So, so we sort of case, take it, and we and we might take his word for it because we don't go into his factory, and he he just says, "Oh, I use a separate clee." So everybody's going to come and say, "Oh, I, I use a separate clee too." I'm just like Baitus. I had that separate clee. We have no really right. We have no way of 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 noticing. Of knowing that he really is honest. So we want to make, um, so we don't want to make exceptions to the Gezerah because it will lead to like a Pandora's box of, of exceptions. It's kind of like Yichud. You know, the, the concept of Yichud, of you know, leaving the door open, even if we, let's say we have two people who have no suspicion about them and there's no chance they did anything but we keep the door open, not because of them, not because we actually worry that they are going to do something, but because we we don't want we want to we we don't want somebody to say, well, I'm like them, you know. We don't we want to create a norm where right. the doors are always left open, you know. The uh, the, yeah, the the laundry the washing the one shirt on Kolomod really feels like a different category, like all the other ones that we're saying we're not making exceptions the reason we might make an exception is like a direct response to, it's like, we have we have made the gzera because we have some concern. And then we're saying, oh, but in this case, we're not concerned. That's not at all what's going on in the Cholomoed laundry cases, I understand it, unless I'm... In other words, you there, we're just... Ma we're making an exception because we have a reason to, like we have a reason to make We have an a reason to make that somewhere. exception because we need to make that exception because he needs to have a right. nice clean shirt. And because need as opposed to, yeah, as opposed, as opposed to, to a concern. Yeah, that's a very good. All right, Yavni, right. I think you hit the nail on the head. That's, I think that's, in other words, where we have a concern, we're not going to say, well, I'm not, you don't have to be worried about me. <laughs> but that's the whole point of it. We're going to worry about everybody, even the people that we're not worried about. Um, because that, that's what a gazera is. <laughs> a gazera is you worry about the whole category. Uh, you don't, uh, okay, very nice. Okay, so so Yavni, read this um, Tosfos, just the dark part. From the bold, right, Your Honor? Yeah, yeah. V'yesh mefarshim de lo asru ela betvisa achat, kolomar shehen behotza achat. So, and there are those who interpret the statement tvisa achat as like one purchase, uh, right? Kegon achim shekanu etrog betvisat habayit de yesh nochlin as like like in the case where two brothers bought a single etrog from the like um, the oh, in, uh, the resources of the hmm? yeah I think it's the in the chapter of yesh nochlin right right of the right anyway in yeah. the Gemara uh, the the but, and uh, now like, he's going to explain and now Tosus I added these quotations here just to be clear now Tosus is going to explain what the Gemara is asking Uparik the park tfisa achat sil kadatach mali bhotza achat u mali bshtay otsaot im mekirin ze ze and so then the challenge of like what do you why tfisa achat is that it's um, why would it matter if it's one if it's one purchase as long as they like if they both stand in the cafeteria line and buy it separately but they know each other why should that matter? Oh. In other words, why does it in other words, why does it help to have two purchases if they're friendly with each other? They're going to share. They're going to share anyway, even though they bought it separately. Oh, right. Mishni, Mishani, Mishani, Kain Tfisachat, 
דהיינו שמכירים זה את זה, ולפיכך זה לא אירי כלל שיהיה מותר לאכול על שולחן אחד בשביל הפסק בינתיים. מותר לאכול על שולחן אחד בשביל הפסק שבינתיים. And so, so we say like Kain Tfisa Achad means like it's not really that they bought it together, but rather that they're friendly enough, that they know each other such that they wouldn't, uh, they would, uh, they would uh, eat from each other's food. And yeah, let's then... go to my explanation here. The second explanation of Tosfos is that when, when they bought with joint money, it is certainly forbidden to eat together. And even where it was bought with separate money, oh, people know each other. It's still forbidden. So therefore, even a marker will not help. So I asked, why not? In other words, according to the second explanation, a marker is not going to work. Why? Because the, because we never were talking about Proximity, like Tos was, like Rashi was, or we were talking or about, you know, we we're talking about that you are that even when you're friend that when you're friendly, but you, you know, you still bought it, you bought it with separate money. Well, that's kind of a good indicator that it's different, but yet it's still forbidden because you know each other. Then then who says a marker will help? the marker is to like designate oh this is your food and this is my food but if i think that i can eat your food just as well as i can eat my food because we're friends then it doesn't help to know this is your mm -hmm. food, and my food. So right i think that's it no, yeah exactly an example you could think of is like at work you you order let's say chinese food and you're sharing the chinese food everybody spent their own money but we we're gonna eat all the food together we can try different things and joel you want to say something well i can even imagine like and this may push against the Bach too, right? You're in a restaurant and, you know, you walk over to your friend and your friend has, you know, some French fries. They might give you some French fries. You know, they could be across the restaurant, but you might go over there to say hi to them. And, and the same thing, if there's a marker, you might turn around to your friend. Oh, what are you eating? You know, you just go past the marker. It doesn't do that much. So. Okay. Um, all right, well, we're, we're out of time. But I only had one other source here, but if we just look, let's just look at the uh, Shulchan Aruch for a minute. Um, how does he paskin? Does he paskin like this Tosfot? In other words, what is Tvisa Achat? So where are we? We're in the Shulchan Aruch, Pei Het. And he says like this. That's pretty much the tour exactly. And he's just saying what we said that also chicken and chayav of you can't have one cheese with cheese together, uh, but you could do it on this table in the back room because that's not where you normally eat, right? The sudar, shulchan shesoder alav hatavshu, the place that you like prepare, the waiters are like preparing in the back room or a countertop in your kitchen. Because you could have milk and meat on the same counter next to each other in your kitchen because you don't normally eat from there. We're not worried to eat them together. Had asur lalot like we saw. And Makpidim is not going to help you. In as you can't just say, uh, well, we are gonna, we're careful, or we're we don't like each other. So, but if you're actually strangers, that's like provable. So then it's mutar. Now, 
But if you eat on two separate tablecloths or on one tablecloth, but you put a, a loaf of bread that you don't eat from on the table or a pitcher, they talk about pitcher, a pitcher of like of food, of drink that you wouldn't normally put on a table. In other words, uh, you know, when I was a kid, they had these restaurants where they would could bring, you know, a pitcher of beer or sangria, but um, they would advertise that. But normally you don't put a pitcher on the table. You put cups on the table and the waiter comes with a pitcher. So if you have a pitcher on the table, I'm explaining it, by the way, according not the way the box is. The box is a pitcher. If you drink from it, it's no good. But pitch, drinking from the pitcher, by the way, means that you pour from the pitcher into cups. It doesn't mean you literally drink from the pitcher. But if you if you don't normally have a pitcher on the table, then then even if you drink from it, it's still enough of a hey care. Um, and the tour said, the tour, if you look, the, the, the shach in hay says, he, he brings it with the lashon of the tour, which is, Yesh omrim she'im yesh lem hotza achat she'en lehem heter al yidei heker she'osim b'nehem. He brings this opinion that if, if they spend their money together, then a heker doesn't work. But notice the Shulchan Aruch does not pass in that. But in fact, even if they have a hotzah achat, a heker will work, not like the Tosfot. Okay. V'davka she'en ochlin min ha'apat. I said that. Hamunach b'nehem leheker. Avalim ochlin menu lo have a heker. If they would eat from it, it doesn't. It's not going to serve its purpose of being a marker. The belav hachi apat ochlin menu munach al shulchan. So you have to have like a second challah. You know, the one challah that you're slicing up and another one. Avalim natnu b'nehem kli shishotin mimenu ubelav hachi ein dar kol liyot al shulchan. But if you put a pitcher there. Even though you drink from the pitcher. And I'm saying it doesn't literally mean drink from it. It means pouring into glasses. Because you don't normally put a pitcher on the table. Or if you put like a candelabra on the table. Oh, of course, why do they talk about pitchers and bread? Because it's not polite to like put a shoe on the table. So you would put like bread, but... You wouldn't eat it, and that would be enough of a reminder. Use the ear. I don't know about your. I don't know about your household, but we do put a pitcher of water on the table uh, for most meals. In which case, it would sound like this hecker wouldn't work anymore if That's we drink correct. from it. That's right? correct. If you normally put a pitcher of table, a pitcher of of water on the table, that it wouldn't work. But if you put um, right, so nowadays the pitcher wouldn't work if it's not really a hecker. Has to actually be a has to actually be unusual, but they're trying to think of something. I'm trying, to, you know, I'm wondering why did we just start with put a menorah on the table or put like you know, you know, uh, uh, I don't know what they had. Maybe they didn't have much stuff. You know, put a piece of wood on the table. And the answer I think is that it's just not polite to eat that way. So they were trying to think of some food thing that would still be a haker. And then he says, then they add one last halacha. So you can't drink, actually. See, that's why I'm saying they're not drinking from the pitcher. You're not allowed to drink from the same thing if you're eating milk and meat. That's because you'll be eating some little bits of milk and meat together. Wait, but, also, I, yeah. but the coast versus the kankan aren't these two different things? Like the coast is what you actually drink out of. The kankan is just what you pour the water out of. Or the right, water. I know. I'm just saying there is a possibility. There are those that want to understand that because he said before that you shouldn't drink from the kankan. And and the, and I the think the shach asked, but what do you mean? He said, of course you can't drink from the shad. He just said, the Ramah is about to say that you can't drink from this. Two people can't drink from the same cup. Why would he tell us twice you can't drink from the kankan? He already says, you, so I'm answering and saying, because they weren't actually drinking. From, when he says drinking from the kankan, he means pouring from the kankan. Right. He literally says, don't drink from it. Right. I but I, I agree with you. It has to mean pouring because like, 
if you pick up a pitcher and you start drinking from it, everyone thinks you're a jerk, right? Like, right. I would assume so, but oh, you never know. Water or wine or whatever. And then they'll tell you that's my hate care. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> I'm not normally a jerk, but now I'm being a jerk. Why is this might different? Um, anyway, this is an interesting halacha. You can't use the, if, if you break it off with your hands, you know, if you have used dirty hands, you can't use the same loaf of bread for milk and meat. And if you dip your food into a bowl of salt, you should have separate bowls. Each one, the milk person and the meat person should have separate salt bowls. Of course, the salt shaker might be different. Because some bits of food end up in the salt. All right, I went over, um, but I wanted to finish that. Um, so we have this idea of Tvisa Achat. We have, I think we learned some interesting things about Gezeiras, when they apply, when they don't apply, when you can make exceptions. And we learned the basic rule of having separate placemats. You know, placemats, by the way, is the modern way of having a separate hay care. When I was at Brandeis University, we had a different thing, which was separate. We had a cafeteria that was milk, that was kosher and non-kosher, two lines. There's a kosher line and non-kosher line. And we were required, and we were not allowed to take your food off of your tray and put it on the table, even though some very um, fancy people felt this was uh, ugly to eat, you know, on a tray, they wanted to put it on the table. So I have a question for you: Is that per, is it permitted to do the, the tray? Obviously, is a good hay care. Do you need a hay care when you're having tray and kosher? No, there there was a shocker or taz about this. Yeah, they had one about how it was dafka basar v'chalav because like exactly like, that you're normally habituate, people are they'd already not eat those things. People know not to eat them. Of course, at Brandeis, in that cafeteria, they really screwed you up because they had a rule that you, you went to Brandeis, Lexi? <laughs> yeah. but, uh, no, they, but they, I was there for a summer program, so I had to uh, be there all the time. So they screwed you up because in the cafeteria there, they serve, so tell me this is still true, but the, the cafeteria, they serve kosher, they only serve a bee, they didn't, wouldn't serve like milk and meat or shellfish or anything. In other words, the tray, the tray, Looked kosher. The trape wasn't like, as in, I think, A, I don't even know if they served like mamisha trape or if it was even just like official akum, like there isn't a mashkiach in that kitchen. No, no, no. But no, no, like, no. They, that was they, the rumor. That's my story. When I, before I came to like, Brandeis, I heard this. I don't, I don't remember they, seeing anything that I was, was the mashkiach like, at Brandeis. When I was at Brandeis, I was the mashkiach. And I can tell so you. Were you so were you Makdi? That the tray food should look tray. I mean, that's no. that's an interesting extension of hacker. Well, that's the yeah, it is an interesting. Extension. No, the, my, no, we were mocked to use the trays, and I think the shach would agree because because um, you could have had like you could have still had a milk and meat issue, couldn't you? If you had well, they the tray would serve is more milk than a hacker. The, the tr no, the the tray food at, at in the in the I can tell you for a fact. They did not spend extra money on kosher meat. The meat, the beef in the in the treif line was treif beef. It was not kosher beef, and they also served milk and meat together, or at least I mean I don't think they had like I didn't really go on that line, so I don't really know what they served. But they 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 did serve I think a milk and a meat entree at the same time. I don't think they served like you know chicken with parmesan on. Right, but you don't, yeah, like, I don't even need that. You just need someone bringing their pizza like from the trafe side on a meat right. day. For so the I'm saying this is, I'm saying this is bad. At Brandeis, they served, they, they wouldn't serve a cheeseburger. But that gave the impression that you could eat on the non, the non kosher line was really kosher. And it confused people. And I, when I was a prospective student, was told, oh, yeah, the other line is also kosher. It's just the, you can have milk or meat. But it's not true. I was later the mashkiach. It's not true. It's a trafe, mamish trafe, but it confused people. So actually, I think that in Brandeis, you should use keep it on, you would be required to keep it on the tray just to remind yourself that that other line is really trafe, 100%. I think we should uh, write a group letter. 
protest letter. Well, when I was at Brandeis, they introduced in the other cafeteria mamish trape, like shellfish. And it was a big, it was a big uh, protest. Banquet. Banquet is the word you're looking at. So they, they weren't they, matri there on kosher style. You see, they were, exactly. they were, they were matri on kosher style. So we had one place that was kosher style, one place that was kosher, and one place that was trafe style. That's the way it was. And it, uh, but anyway, my point is that yes, if, if the food is actually mamish trafe, you don't need a hay care, uh, unless you might really be confused <laughs> because it's kosher style. Yes, okay. thank you. Uh, before you, before I have a 10 second thing. This is the time of year I normally uh, have uh, check ins with people. If you could send me, you know, what, when generally is a good time to meet, then and what time zone you're in, and, and do it on the basis of your time zone. That would be which days of the week and which times that would be helpful. I usually do this. Uh, between Pesach and uh, and Shavuot. Okay, yes, Kayach, very much. Thank you, Rabbi Danzig. Sure, thank you, all the presenters today, you, Isaac, Isaac and Lexi. And Isaac, okay. yes, Kayach, Isaac. Okay, thank let you. it go. Next week is Joel. Mm -hmm. I'll be. I'll send out sources soon, so probably tonight. Great. We're just gonna do 89 next week. Yeah, that's right.